Amen. It's like fire straight up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire shut up in my bones. It's like fire. Yes, it is. Shut up in my bones. The Holy Ghost fire is shut up in my bones. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. The Holy Ghost fire is shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that Holy Ghost fire. For those who know what I'm talking about, I don't need to go through any kind of long explanation. For those who do, no explanation is needed. You know about that fire, that thing that burns within you. Oh, it's not the kind of fire that sends you to the doctor, but it's the kind of fire that raises up your spirit, your inner man. It brings out the best in you. And this is what I'm talking about. We thank God for that Holy Ghost fire. I'd like to welcome you to Fest Manor Ministries of Miracles, where my wife, the prophetess Michelle Ruth Smith, is the pastor and founder of this great uh, ministry. Hallelujah. I'm the elderly Anthony Smith. I'm the host for tonight. Our overseer is none other than the Apostle Mathena Ashley. Glory to God. We honor all of those who honor God. We do. Oh, we thank the ministers. Yes, Lord. We thank the deacons and officers. We thank the saints who keep pushing the church forward. Hallelujah. I thank them for giving honor to God, mm -hmm. the creator, the son, Jesus, our Salvador. Mm -hmm. That means our savior. Hallelujah. And we thank Jesus for sending us the Holy Ghost that we just sung about. Our comforter, our GPS, our directions while we are here on planet Earth. Glory to God. We thank all of those who are looking because you want to know more because you want to come to Jesus. Come on. As they say at the beach, the water is just right. <laughs> the timing is just right. Come on in to Jesus right now while the blood is running so warm in your veins. Glory to God. Before we get started today, I just want to say if you have any questions about this lesson that we're about to do, Hallelujah. Or about anything spiritual. If I can't, if I don't have the answer, which I probably won't, I could go out and seek it from someone who will. That's what I do. Hallelujah. I'd be glad to do that for you. I'd be helping you any way that you need help. I don't have the answers. I will get the answers. I will find it. I will seek. Hallelujah. I know people in high places, people who are close to God, and I don't have any shame of calling them up, calling them up and requesting, you know, some information on things. It helps me, and if it's help, it's helping you, glory to God. By all means, email me, smithleeanthony7 at gmail.com. It will be on the, on the description. I will make sure of that. If you wish to donate to this ministry, cash app us at dollar sign FMMM306. And we will pray over whatever you give. We don't make a difference between a dollar and one hundred and one thousand dollars. Hallelujah. We will pray just the same for everyone. I wish you would turn to our key verse, glory to God. And it's coming from the book of Judges, Old Testament. Chapter 6. And the key verse is 17. And I'm going to go ahead and read it. And it says this. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Hallelujah. This is Gideon. He doesn't realize, as you can tell, that he's talking to God. He's not sure. He's not trusting in who it is he's talking to. And that brings up our title. Trust in the Lord. Let us pray and we'll break it up and put this together so it will make sense. 
Heavenly Father, oh, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for another Tuesday evening Bible study, first man of ministries of miracles. Oh, Lord, let this be a lesson where the prayers go up, where the messages go up, and the people are taking in what thus says the Lord, and they're able to use it to fight the walls of the devil. We thank you. We bless you. And bless us by giving us your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. We know that when we trust in the Lord, good things are going to happen. And I want to start with our key verse. And he said unto him, okay, once again, Gideon, mm -hmm, talking to God, but he's not sure if this is God. And we will get into that in a minute. If now I have found grace in thy sight, okay, if you see where I'm doing well, living a holy life in your sight, because that's who counts. Man comes and goes, they think in any way they wish, but you got to depend on God, on Jesus, what he thinks it, it really is what matters. That's all that matters if you want to know the truth. Because man can think it any way they want, but they can't think me into the kingdom of God. And they can't even think me into the dungeons of hell. Hallelujah. So I care about what the Lord thinks. What Harry and them think is okay. But what the Lord thinks is better. Always. For you, for me, for all of us. So he says, if now I have found grace in thy sight. Lord, if you see something good in me, then show me a sign. Give me something I can hold on to that let me know that thou talking with me, that you are talking to me. It is not someone's playing a game, someone trying to trick me. This is actually you. And you probably wonder, why would Gideon doubt God? And we are going to talk about that in great detail, details as we get into our topic, trust in the Lord. And let's start with the word trust. I went to Google, and this is what it says. Trust. Firm belief in the reliability, I'm sorry, the reliability, the truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. You believe. You just know that this is the truth. Trust. Hallelujah. Well, let's look at three major reasons why we, you and I, and maybe Gideon as well. Have problems sometimes trusting when we are praying, when we have faith, but yet our faith is not fully activated. Why we have problems trusting in the Lord. And I'm just going to give you three. There's probably more you can fill in by all means. But these, to me, are the top three. We listen to naysayers. Number one, <laughs> naysayers are those people who are negative about everything. I hear people now they say, no negativity around me. Keep your negativity away from me. It's a good thought. It's a good way to live. Keep those who are going to doubt you about your Lord and Savior Jesus, stay away. I'm going to tell you right now, stay away from me because I don't have time. I don't try the world. I've been in the world so long. I know what the world has to offer. I've been with Jesus now for 12 years straight, and I know what he has to offer. I am staying with Jesus until I take my last breath. Hallelujah. Yes, I make mistakes along the way. We all do. Jesus got that covered. All right? No excuses. Stay with me. Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the light if you're going to live in heaven with him. All right, let's move on here. So the first way, you can't be listening to these people who are putting doubt in you. Oh, they're out there. <laughs> and not only with Bible, but just in everyday living. Here's a good point. Okay, I wanted to start, my wife and I actually want to start a little bakery downtown, our little town that we live in, you know, we we okay financially, so we're not really trying to make a living, but we would like to increase our living if we can, if we want a little bakery. And I'm going to tell you, the biggest obstacle wasn't the money, wasn't finding a place, wasn't getting licenses and all these other things that, you know, as we did our research, it's family, oh, <laughs> you're going to try to do 
a bakery in Hampton, South Carolina. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. You're going to go broke within a couple of weeks. This kind of thinking, these are the naysayers. These are the people trying to stop you from doing what it is you want to do. Be careful of them because they exist within the family as well. In fact, I'll go this far. Probably they'll be your number one naysayers. Are you kidding me? You want to, you know, and they make you feel so low. You have got to look to Jesus for your help and not to man. Glory to God. Okay, that's, I don't want to get stuck there because that's a lesson within itself. So number one, that a lot of us have doubt naysayers. Oh, you believe in Jesus? You know that was a slavery thing? Mm-hmm. You know that's a white man's God? Mm-hmm. You know that Jesus uh, uh, really was just something they made up of because people were scared of dying and they wanted some kind of relief, so they came up with this theory of Jesus? Please, try Jesus. I pray prayers have been answered. I pray for those who are near death, and it's not me. It's the work of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that brought them back. My wife could testify down here in Savannah, Memorial Hospital. Doctors done gave up to get the family together. She don't have but a few more minutes. Her mom came to my wife and six others, and we went in a little room somewhere, closed the door, and we prayed. And before we got through praying, they said she moved. She opened her eyes. She said something. And she's living today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay? And that's just one of many things I have to do in the name of Jesus. But you have to try them for yourself. Don't let the naysayers put you down. Okay, two. We suppress, that means we keep down, we won't allow it to flourish, our faith. Let's talk about faith for a minute. The best definition I have found for faith comes right out the Bible, Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Okay, these are things that you hope for, whatever it may be, money, mm, a car, uh, life and death. Mm -hmm. It's the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Now, if you can see it coming, or someone told you, well, you're going to get that money tomorrow, <laughs> that you're not working out of faith. You're working out of what man done already set up. When you work by faith, you don't see it, you don't know how, but you trust that God is going to make a way somehow. Glory to God. That's the faith that I'm talking about. Stop suppressing it. It's in us. All man has a measure of faith. My Bible tells me, and Jesus said it. All men, we all got some kind of faith in us. Everybody. My Lord says this. Some faith are bigger than others. And some people, and now when you talk about faith, we're talking about works that we could do for the kingdom of God. Faith is what propels us. Some has more than others. Some have different ways of using their gifts. Let's not confuse the two. But faith is that motivation that keeps you going. We all got that. Some more, some less. It keeps us on task in the works that the Lord has for us. Once again, another topic. Let's keep moving. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so we got the naysayers. We got suppressing the faith. And the last one, we can't use our senses to detect his presence. The presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Son, Jesus, the presence of God. We can't see them. Sometimes, a lot of times, you can't feel them. Don't hear them. So, therefore, what happens? We start doubting. We become like our own personal naysayer. Well, if I can't see it, and we're going to talk about that with Thomas. If I can't see it, touch it, feel it, hear it, taste it. I think I cover all the senses. I don't believe it. A lot of us are like that. We have got to trust in the Lord. Okay. Now we're going to get into the story of Gideon. And as we get into the story of Gideon, we're going to find out why, at the beginning, why he had so many tests for the Lord. And I'm going to give you three examples of them. Why did he not just trust God? God sent prophets. He sent the angel. But Gideon was like, 
I just don't know. I feel like you are, but I don't trust yet. We're going to get into why that happened. Because he's a definite honorable man in God. That's why God chose him to help free the Israelites from the predicament that they were in. Okay, so why did Gideon doubt God messengers? I told you he sent a prophet and he sent an angel. To answer that, let's do a quick summary of the story of Gideon by turning to Judges 6 through 8 is where it's at. But I'm just going to summarize. I'm not going to try to cover it all, but I'm going to give you a quick summary of it. Okay. In Judges, we find about Gideon this. God brought the Israelites out of abundance from Egypt. Okay, so it's after they were liberated from the Egyptians. He sustained them for four years, 40 years in the wilderness. Fed them fresh manna, the name of this ministry, was food that came from heaven. Gave them water, hit the rock, and here comes water. Kept the enemies at bay. Because God was fighting with them. All of these things he did for the Israelites. They defeated the Canaanites. The walls of Jericho came down because God was with them. He gave them this land of milk and honey. You know, listen to what I'm saying here. Because this is what happened. Unfortunately, the Israelites turned away from God. Once they got there and got settled into this place, that was pretty much just for them to move in. Just move into these places that was built. Keep their furniture, whatever. God gave it to you. They forgot about God. They went on their way and looked at the ways of the world and started living like the world. Talking about the Israelites. After God did all of these things, had the pillar of clouds in the daytime and at night had the fire so they could see that God is with them. Parted the Red Sea. But yet, somehow, they forgot about God. This is why God kind of separated himself from his people. For a while, for a season, it was necessary. Okay. The countries from the east of the Israelites started to take advantage of them. Okay, a lot of them. A lot of these places that surrounded the Israelites started taking their food. <laughs> they would plant the food. They would raise the animal. And these folks would come and just take it from them. The Israelites thought they could fight, but they could not fight without God. They just didn't have it. And these, the word got out. They not fight like they used to fight. They're not as strong as they used to be. Let's go and get some more of their food. Why should we plant? Let them plant and we'll eat. This is what was going on. It was getting bad. They would take their ladies, take their children, take their food, take their possessions, do what they wanted to do as if the Israelites were just nothing. This was possible because God wasn't assisting them because they, the Israelites, left God. I repeat, they left God. God never left them, but they got away from God. Now, once all of this started taking place, they had to move into mountains, live in the mountains, live inside caves, so they could try to have some semblance of living away from the enemy. But the enemy kind of found their way up there too. Glory, hallelujah. In time, the Israelites prayed and they pleaded to God. They were trying to come back to God now. God heard them. God sent prophets. He sent an angel to Gideon. However, however, Gideon wasn't quite sure if this was God. Remember, I can't give you the years exactly, but for quite a few years, they were not in the grace of God, and God was not with them. So Gideon was like, I don't know. Is this a trick maybe from the east? These folks have been taking our food and everything. Could this be one of their tricks? This angel, so-called angel? I don't know. Could this be an evil spirit trying to trick me? He didn't know. When the angel approached him, if this was of God or of the world. The reason? God wasn't with them. No prophets. No one was coming to the Israelites at that time period because God was not in their favor. 
However, Gideon didn't trust the angel at first. This is due to the absence of God in their life. God in their life, excuse me. He asked the following question. If you look at Judges 6, 21 through 22, this is Gideon. He said this. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hands and touched the flesh and unliving cakes and there rose up fire out of the rocks and consumed the flesh and the unliving cakes. So Gideon asked the angel, if I could go and bake something and bring it back, will you be here? The angel said, I'll tell you until you come back. He came back with this and said, if this is of God, let him consume it. And this is what is happening. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. The angel disappeared after the food was consumed. Magically. 22. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel, that who he was speaking to was an angel of God, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. Now he kind of believes. And he wasn't quite sure. All right, let's look at Judges 6, 36 through 38. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand. Now God had told Gideon, you're going to be the hero here. You're going to save Israelites pretty much all by yourself. Israelites didn't know what they mean. Uh, Gideon was like, hmm, boy, I don't really know. I should go out there and fight these enemies. They are strong. If God is not really with me, I'm going to get my butt whooped, so to speak. Is what he's thinking. So he says this, 39. And Gideon said unto God, let not the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, go back. 6, chapter 6, 36 to 38. And Gideon said unto God, if thou wilt save Israel by my hands, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool, wool, W-O-O-L, in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, so if the fleece, the wool part, is the only thing that's wet, and it be dry upon the earth, that means the ground around it will be dry, then shall I know that thou will save Israel by my hands, and thou has said. So he's saying, God, I'm testing you. This wool, let it be wet, but let the ground around it be dry. That's almost impossible. If you think about that. All right, 38. And it was so, for he arose up early the next day and thrust the fleece together and wring the dew out of it, wring the water out of it. It was wet, but a bowl of full water, but the ground around it was dry. Okay, go on. Judges 6, 39 through 40. One more test. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thy anger be hot against me. Now he realized he's testing. If this is God, you know, God don't be a little angry. Keep testing. But God wasn't because God knew what Gideon was doing. Gideon is being precaution. Gideon is being vigilant. Gideon is going on the side of safety because God was not with them for quite a while. God knew this. He knew Gideon, Gideon's heart. So, and Gideon said unto God, Let not thy anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry. Let the fleece be dry. This wool be dry, but let the ground around it be wet. That's almost impossible. How are you going to put a wool on wet ground and the, the wool doesn't get wet? 38. And it was so, for he arose early in the morning and thrust the fleece together and wring the dew out of the fleece. It both, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong place. Verse 40. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only. The fleece was dry, but the ground was wet, and there was dew on the ground. Glory to God. Israel was liberated due to Gideon trusted in the Lord. He followed God's instruction and the Israelites are now free again. Unfortunately, if you're going to read the story, it went back to the ways of the world once again. But go ahead and read Gideon 6, 7, and 8 out of the book of Judges. Hallelujah. Now, I promise you I'll tell you in the New Testament about Doubting Thomas, one of the original disciples. Yes, but they call him Doubting Thomas because of this incident that happened after Jesus died and came back 
Thomas wasn't there when Jesus came to the other disciples. He didn't believe unless he touched. He said, I now need to touch the wounds that he suffered on that cross before I believe it is Jesus. Jesus returned. And if you go to Matthew 22 and 40, it says, this is the first and great I'm sorry, am I there? No, I'm, I'm in the wrong place. John 20 and 29. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So Thomas did touch Jesus in all these places and see him right before him. Now he sees him as Jesus as before he died. He sees him again coming back from death. He believes now. But Jesus says, blessed is those who have not seen. That would be me, you, probably everybody. I don't think too many of us have seen Jesus. Hallelujah. But yet, we believe. There's blessings. By not having to see, having to touch, having to use our senses. But we use the Holy Spirit to know that Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. There's another one I want to use. And this, Matthew 22 and 40. That's one I almost read before. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophet. That means love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. If you love God, you don't need to see him. You don't need to touch him. You don't need to do all these things. You won't be going through all the tests that Gideon put him through. That love is so unconditional that you would do it all for God because you love God so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should love God when things are not going so well in our life. We could come to God in prayer. Oh, we should love him when things are on the up and up. All is going well. Bills are paid. The children are doing well. The marriage is working out. The job is up and up. You should still love God. You should love him when you're sick in the hospital, in ICU even. Just as much as you love him when all is well in your life. You can run. You can think for yourself. You got it all physically and mentally taken care of. You love God. That love for God comes with no condition. I'm not going to play this tick tac tac game with God. Oh God, if you do this for me, I will increase my love for you. This love comes all the time. Whether I'm down or out, I love God and I trust. Getting back to our title. <laughs> I trust in the Lord. We've got to get that love. You can't trust him if you really don't love him. That he's going to make a way somehow. This is our faith working now. This is our faith building up. That word somehow. We don't know how. We can't see it. We can't touch it. But we believe the substance that we pray for. It shall be revealed in our lives. I encourage you. Trust in God. We trust our money in the bank. Mm -hmm. We trust our children to drive down these dangerous highways. Mm -hmm. We trust in people to run this country that we live in. Some really are not worthy, but we trust them anyhow. Trust God. I encourage you. Get that love for God within you and trust in Jesus to make a way out of no way. Glory, glory, hallelujah. In closing, we have to trust in God. Get in, it took him a couple of things he had to do to get that trust up before you go and fight the enemy, and he won. But we know the story goes on. The Israelites went back, so I don't know to call it a victory or a temporary victory or what, but he won the battle. Glory to God. If God was with him, trust in the Lord. He's with you. Don't trust me. I say, uh, I'm telling you, trust me. I started to say that, but then I had to think for a minute. No, trust God. He is there for you. He sent his son to die for you. Trust in the Lord, not in man. 
Man comes and goes, but God is for always the one who's looking after your best entrance. I pray today that this message was a blessing to you as it is for me. Trust in the Lord without forsaking him for anything. No compromising. No tick for tat. You do for me, God, now I will trust in you. No. Trust him anyhow. Wait on the Lord. You don't always work in our timing. But he always is on time. Because he is an on time God. Pray your blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to stop by and tell you, trust in God. We're close with the benediction. Heavenly Father, as we leave this episode of First Matter Ministries of Miracles, Tuesday evening Bible study, trust in the Lord from the book of Judges 6, 7, and 8. We talked about Gideon. He had a reason because he hasn't been around God. No prophets came to him about God. And yes, he had a reason to be weary. But once you realize it was God, he went to work on behalf of our Heavenly Father and the people called the Israelites. I pray that my people will trust in you and not in anything else. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. These other things will be added on to you. That's Matthew 6 and 33. I pray that you will seek out God in all that you do. In Jesus' name, you all have a blessed week. Amen, amen, amen. See you next Tuesday, 7.30, here on Fresh Manor Ministries of Miracles. Glory to God.